Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here for our video about improved Euler's method. Remember in our Euler's method video before this in the series we had some first order differential equation. And Euler's method allowed us to approximate some y value given some initial condition x0, y0. And the idea was if we wanted to approximate the y value say at x1, we used the slope of the tangent line at our initial condition x0, y0. That took us to some point x1, y1, which was not the exact y value, but approximately the y value based on this tangent line. And remember that as long as we were moving over some pretty small amount of horizontal distance, some change in x we called h, then we could get a pretty decent approximation. We were able to figure out x1 and y1. x1 just meant we moved over h from the original x0, and we used our original Euler's method formula to approximate the y value, and that formula was just based on the slope of this tangent line. Now if you look at our picture here, you can see that our actual solution to the differential equation is bending above the tangent line. So you'll notice that our approximation that we would get from the original Euler method is actually below the actual y value. A similar thing would happen if we had a solution that was bending below the tangent line. We would get an approximation that's actually higher than the y value at y1. And if you think about focusing behind the actual solution here on the slope field, you'll notice that it's because the slope field points a slightly different direction over here than it does at our x0, y0. So one way that we can get a better approximation for x1, y1 is to actually include information about the slope field over on the right hand side of our interval h that we're trying to approximate across. So if we take a look at the slope of the slope field over at our x1, y1, the point that Euler's method would have given us, you'll notice we get a slightly different slope than the slope of this tangent line at x0, y0. In other words, our slope at that point, plugging into the function, we would need to plug in x1, which is our x sub 0 plus h, moving over h, plugging in that x value. And the y value that we're using is actually the y value that the original Euler method would have given us. So I have a point here that is my initial condition. I have a point over here that would be what Euler's method would say is the approximation for this. And I've got one slope that matches the slope field over here on the left side, and another slope that matches the slope field over here on the right side. Now if I take this slope over here on the right side and I put it through our original point, you'll notice that it may not be any better of an approximation than the tangent slope. You'll see that it gives us an approximation with an error on the opposite side of the correct y value. And if we were only to use the slope of the slope field through x1, y1, then that's going to give us a point here, which may not be any better than the approximation we got using the original Euler's method. What we can do though, if we go back to thinking about our slope through x1, y1 here from the slope field, if I extend both of these lines with different slopes here, if I could think of using something in the middle of those two, that's actually going to give me a better approximation. I'll be taking into account information about the slope here on the left side of the interval we're looking over and the slope on the right side of the interval we're looking for. And the way that improved Euler's method works is it just takes the average of those two slopes. So to figure out the average of the two slopes, we would just take the slope on the left side of the interval. We would add the slope that we get on the right side of the interval there. We'll add those up and divide by two, and that will give us the average of the slopes on the left side and the right side. You can see if we take our line that has slope that is the average of those two slopes and we put it through the initial condition, we get a much better approximation of the actual y value on the solution for the differential equation. So if we now take this average of the slopes and we put it in for the slope that we were using in the original Euler's method formula, then we get an equation that looks like this for y1 based on a bunch of information that has to do with x0 and y0. If we then think in general about the next y term equaling the current y value plus some horizontal increment times the average of the slopes of our direction field at those two endpoints, then that gives us the improved Euler's method formula. One additional thing we want to point out here is remember that this y value that we get to plug in for our right side slope that is based on using the original Euler formula to figure out a y value to plug in for your right side slope. We'll go ahead and work through one example with you in this video. This is actually the same example that we worked through in our original Euler's method video. So we start with the equation y prime is equal to x times y, so that's the formula that we'll be plugging in our values. We want to approximate the y value when x is 1.3. We have an initial condition of y of 1 equals 1, so when x is 1, y is 1, and we're using an increment of 0.1 horizontally. 
So at our starting place in the table, when n is 0, that's our initial condition there. So x is 1 and y is 1. In other words, our solution goes through the point 1, 1. We're going to approximate from 1, 1. And we want to approximate 1.3, going 0.1 at a time. So if I go 0.1 at a time, my n equals 1 is going to be when x is 1.1. My n being 2 will be when x is 1.2. And my n being 3, that will be when x is 1.3, since we're going 0.1 at a time. So our improved Euler method formula will help us get our y value approximations as we go along 0.1 at a time. We'll go ahead and practice our formula. So our y1, which is the next thing that we need in the table, if I use my formula here, is going to equal y sub 0 plus h. So we have the average of the two slopes down here. This first part is what we get when we plug in our current x and y values into f. So this is actually going to be f of x0 and y0, so that's the first part there, plus what we get on the other side. So this x sub n would be x sub 0 plus h. That's actually x1, so this is actually f of x1 here. And now this here would be the y1 that we get from the Euler's method, okay? So this is not y1. We don't have y1 yet. We couldn't actually use that to get y1. But we use the y1 that we would get from Euler's method. And I'm going to go ahead and put y1 with a little squiggle above it so that you know that's something that we need to grab from Euler's formula. So let's go ahead and figure out what that is. So our y1 from the original Euler's would be y0 plus our h times f of x0, y0. Now if we go ahead and put our information in there from our first row, so y0 is 1, plus h we know is 0 0.1, and if we plug into our function here, x times y, the x0 and the y0, then x0 is 1, and y0 is also 1, so we get 1 times 1 for our x, y. Now this is just the original Euler's that's helping us find this y1 that we're going to need to plug in, right? To actually use the improved Euler's. So here when we figure this out, we actually get 1.1. And now we should be able to evaluate our actual y1 for improved Euler, right? So y1 is going to equal y0, and y0 is 1, plus our h, which is 0.1 times what we get when we plug in x0 and y0 into the formula, which is 1 and 1. So there we get x times y is 1 times 1, plus what we get when we plug in x1 and the y1 that original Euler's method would have given us. So our x1 is actually 1.1, and you can see here original Euler's method would have given us 1.1 as well, so that's the y value we use. All of that is over 2, and if we plug all of this into the calculator, then we will get 1.1105 for our y1. So you can see that finding y values using improved Euler's method, we have to be able to calculate things using Euler's method as well, because it actually lives inside of our improved Euler's method. Let's go ahead and look for our y2 now. So y2 is going to equal, according to our formula down here, y1 plus h times the function when we plug in the current one that we have, the last one that we got, which is x1, y1, plus our function value when we plug in the next h value, so f of x plus 1 plus h is actually going to be f of x2, and remember this down here, the y value that we're going to plug into this is the y value that Euler's method would give us for y2. So we'll take the average of those two things, which means we'll add them and divide by 2. Let's go ahead and figure out our original Euler's method y2. That's what we'll need to plug in there. So that will equal y1 plus h times f of x1 y1. Plugging in our x1 y1 values, so y1 is 1.1105 plus our h, which is 0 0.1, and then our function with x1 and y1 plugged in, remember our function is x times y, so that will give us 1.1 times 1.1105 as our x times y. If we plug that into our 
calculator, we will get 1.232655. So that will be the Y value that we use here. Let's go ahead and plug in our information. So then our actual Y2 for improved Euler will be the Y1, 1.1105, 1 plus our H, which is 0 0.1, times the quantity, the function when we plug in x1, y1, so that's x times y, plugging those in, we'll get 1.1 times 1.1105 plus the x2, which is 1.2, times the y2 that we would get from Euler, 1.232655. We'll divide all of that by 2 and plug that into a calculator. That will give us about 1.2455368. So that is our Y2, 1.2455368. And we are now just one iteration, one step away from having our Y of 1.3. So we'll now be finding our Y of 3 using our formula here. That will be Y2 plus our H times f of x2, y2, plugging in x2, y2 into our formula up here, plus what we get when we plug in the next x value, so that's x3, what the original Euler's method would give us as y3. So we'll have to figure out that first, and then we can plug in, add, and divide by 2. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So our original Euler y3, based on this information in our table, would be y2, plus h times f of x2, y2. And if we plug in the values we have from the table, y2 is 1.2455368, plus 0 0.1 is our h, and then we need to take our x2 times our y2, so that would be 1.2, times our long decimal here, 1.2455368, We'll get an even longer decimal still for this one. We'll actually get 1.39500121.6. And so that is our Y3 from the original Euler's method that will go in here in our improved Euler's method formula. So let's go ahead and compute our last Y value. Y3 is equal to Y2, which is 1.2455368. Plus h, which is our 0 0.1 increment there, times the quantity f of x2, y2. So in our x times y, plug in our x2 and y2. So we get 1.2 times 1.2455368. Plus, now our x3 is 1.3, so x times y is 1.3 times this y3 from original Euler is this one here, this 1.39500121.6. All of that over 2, the average of those two things there. If we go ahead and type that in our calculator, we get a very long decimal. We get 1.41094456. And with this being your end answer, you could round this, of course, as much as you felt was appropriate or as much as you were asked to round. Um, we'll go ahead and maybe round there. But this is actually the full answer that we have, doing an approximation of y at x equals 1.3, given this equation, this condition, and an h value of 0.1. We want to caution you not to round or to round to many, many places beyond what you might need if you're getting your y at 1.1, your y at 1.2. If we're rounding, then we're not actually getting the truest interpretation of what improved Euler method is supposed to be giving us for our end approximation at x equals 1.3. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.